Welcome back to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to bring more information into your photos using dodging and burning. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you how to recover information from your shadows and your highlights using dodging and burning. You'll also learn dodging and burning to add more definition to your photo, making the light look a little bit more three-dimensional. We got a great video for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So we're starting off with the landscape photo. Now you can actually download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So there are a few things that I wanna do with this photograph. I wanna bring a little bit more light here into my foreground and in this area and along the tree line because it's a bit dark and I can't really see what's going on. I also wanna make the sky a little bit darker because it's a bit bright. All these things can be done with dodging and burning and we're gonna show you how to do that and restrict these areas to just the highlights or the shadows. Super cool technique. Let's go ahead and start off with our sky. Now I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. This is a great non-destructive way to dodge and burn. So we're gonna go ahead and take my light levels down just a little bit here from the very top right and then pull my midpoint down a little bit as well. Okay, now if we don't want this visible everywhere, so we're gonna hit Control or Command I to invert our layer mask. And what we wanna do is just simply paint white right over top of our sky, making this completely visible over the sky. And you're gonna see it's actually gonna bring back some of the details. Now, it's looking really, really great over the sky, but we're running into a very common issue, and that is the fact that right here, right over top of the mountains, as you can see right here, it's just darkening those mountains down, right? And it doesn't exactly look realistic. So what we're gonna use is a technique called blend if that allows this to just show up in the light areas like the sky and hidden from the dark areas like the mountains. So to get to blend if, all you have to do is double click right here on your layer. There we go. And we have our layer style. Now we actually had an episode on blend if recently, very simple technique. Basically what I wanna do is here where it says underlying layer, this slider will start to hide this effect in the shadows and the slider on the right will start to hide this from the highlights. So to get a little bit more feathering in, we wanna hold Alt or Option. This is very important. So hold Alt or Option and click and drag from the left to the right. And you're gonna see as I do this, let's go ahead and zoom into the mountains there. You're gonna see that I, as I do this, it's going to start to disappear from the mountains. See this dodge and burn effect? it's disappearing from the mountains. Now, if you don't hold Alt or Option, it looks like this. See how it looks really choppy, not that good. So make sure you hold Alt or Option and go ahead and click and drag from the left to the right. And right about there, we have a nice balance. So this effect is being hidden from the shadows, but it's still visible in the highlights. So what we have is a really nice darkening of our sky, adding some more information, and still it's hidden from the mountains in the background. Now we can take this same principle and edit elements in our foreground. So let's go ahead and grab another curves adjustment layer. This time we're gonna go a little bit brighter. There we go. You can always adjust the brightness at any time, by the way. And what we're gonna do is grab our brush tool and paint white right over here in some of these darker areas here in my foreground. There we go, because I want to be able to see details in the shadow. There we go. Now that looks pretty good. The only thing there is I lightened up quite a bit of the light areas as well. So let's go ahead and get into blend if and make sure we're only affecting the dark areas. So it's basically the opposite of what we did in the sky. This time, instead of grabbing from the left, we're gonna use the slider on the right. So let's hold Alt or Option. I'm gonna click and drag from the right to the left. And you can see, look at this, it's just hiding this from the lighter areas making it only visible in the shadows. All right, and that's all there is to it. Hit okay, and you can see now this is visible in the shadows and it protects the information in the light. Okay, we've got one more of these layers. We're gonna do a curves adjustment because these trees are a little bit dark. So we're gonna go ahead and brighten up those trees. Well, let's invert our layer mask by hitting Control or Command I. There we are, and we can brighten up the mountains a little bit while we're at it. Fantastic. And this time I wanna hide this from the highlights. So let's just double click right here. There we are and hold Alt or Option and we're gonna just hide this from the highlight so it's just showing up in the shadows. 
and look at this exposure. It's looking fantastic. Here's our before and our after. We've brought a lot of information into this image. So that's dodging and burning to actually recover information from your photograph, which is always where I recommend starting off. Now, we can get into dodging and burning to actually enhance some of the light in this photo too. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. We're gonna go ahead and grab another curves adjustment. There we go. Let's go ahead and brighten it up a little bit. This is gonna be dodging. We're gonna invert our layer mask and then we're gonna use our brush tool. Now, the key with this technique is you wanna use your brush tool. You wanna to use a soft edge brush, okay? So go ahead and right click and make sure your hardness is set to zero. There we go. And with your soft edge brush, now you wanna make sure to bring your flow way down. So we're gonna bring our flow to about 5%. So I'm just gonna type in 0.5 up here for my flow. This allows me to paint over an area over and over and over again and get a buildup effect of the light. So if you use a high flow, basically it just puts down all of the light at the same time. But using a lower flow, if you go over an area over and over again, you have a buildup effect. And that gives you a much more realistic, much more natural looking buildup of the light. There we go. So you can see painting over and over and over again, we're adding more light, adding more definition to these areas. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this area here. Fantastic. This is looking really, really nice. So we're making our brush larger and smaller as we go along. You can use your open and close brackets to do this. And basically I'm just highlighting some of the natural highlights. I'm enhancing some of the natural highlights in the water. There we go, to add a little bit more definition. And you can use this, you can see I'm just using a regular mouse to do this. Um, of course, you can use this with like a tablet or something like that if you want a little bit more control, but as long as you're using a low flow, you can most definitely use this technique with a simple mouse or a trackpad. So again, what I'm doing is following the highlights that are in my image and just going over them. Just making sure, hey, I wanna brighten those highlights up a little bit. There we go. Now, the background, I don't need that to be much more descriptive than it is because we really wanna focus here on the foreground and, and on the water. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Really, really nice effect. It almost gives the image like a painterly type effect because we are kind of painting light. Now, let's go ahead and do a little bit of burning. We're gonna use our curves adjustment layer and darken down a little bit. Invert our layer mask and then with our brush tool, same principle here, I'm gonna paint on some of these darker areas to darken them down. So when we make our lights a little bit lighter and we make our darks a little bit darker, it adds contrast to the image and we can do this to add shape. There we go, that's fantastic. Looking great. All right, and you wanna still be at a low flow. So my brush, as you can see, I'm painting with a 5% flow here. So I want these effects to be really nice and subtle and I want the layering to be very, very smooth. Fantastic. Now I tend to dodge a little bit more than I use burning. Um, you can obviously choose your own preference there, but I think for me, I like to lighten areas up generally more than I like to darken areas. So let's turn this off and on and we can see how that looks. So let's go ahead and both of those. Take a look right down here where this area looks relatively flat. After we have the dodging and burning, you can see how it carves out a little bit more. Like it, it looks like it kind of comes to a point a little bit more because I've basically painted light over here and shadow over here that makes it look like that. And we have the same effect on the rest of the water. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and group all of those together. We'll turn this off. Here's the before. This is a really cool transformation. And here is our after. Now, if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, super easy, just take the entire group and lower the opacity and you get a little bit of a subtle effect. I think this looks great. Thank you so much for watching. Dodging and burning is one of my favorite techniques. It's incredibly powerful. And as you can see here, it can make a huge difference on any one of your photos. I hope you're enjoying the 30 days of Photoshop. Now, if you haven't already done so, be sure to sign up. You can do that following the link right down below. It's completely free and it's the best way to take you from beginner all the way to pro in 30 days. Thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.